Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 11. Domesticated Elephants Elephants are extremely smart, almost everybody knows that. The animals have great memories, and they live in groups ruled over by the oldest and most dominant female. In the wild, they live up for up to 70 years. Pachyderms, the order elephants belong to, are so smart that they are besides humans and bonobos when it comes to intelligence. It should come as no surprise, then, that scientists believe that elephants are currently in the process of domesticating themselves. But how in the world does that work? A new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences claims elephants are rapidly domesticating to survive. Domestication means animals have genetically adapted to live alongside humans. This usually means to have a tamer personality and friendly features that humans find cute. All the things that make us love cats and dogs and horses. Over thousands of years, humans have selected certain animals to keep us company and to eat. But it's not very common for animals to choose to be with us. The weird thing is that in the case of cats and dogs, humans directly contributed to the process of domestication. But amazingly, elephants seem to be doing it themselves, perhaps because they know how threatened they are by humans destroying their habitats and hunting them for their ivory. Either way, it's a clever survival tactic. What you might not know is that we humans domesticated ourselves as well. Researchers say that over the past 80,000 years, we have developed shorter brow ridges and have become less aggressive as a species. Studies suggest this is because cooperation resulted in a better chance of survival. Highly aggressive males were generally eliminated from society, probably because they were good warriors and died young in battle or because they were probably a threat to the ruling elites of whatever culture. Self-domestication also allowed human beings to lengthen our childhoods, eliminate bullies, accelerate communication, and help with the development of language. Even bonobos appear to be doing the same thing. Bonobos are less aggressive than chimpanzees, and they work better together. But let's get back to elephants. Scientists have documented behaviors that appear to show African elephants moving toward a more domesticated lifestyle. They also identified 674 genes associated with animal domestication. Nobody's entirely sure what's going on, but elephants appear to be pulling out all the stops to survive potential extinction. Number 10. King Arthur's Castle An inscription from the 7th century has just been found in the ruins of an English castle with direct links to the legendary King Arthur. The inscription is an interesting combination of Latin writing, Christian symbols, and Greek letters. The engraving was found scrawled on a chunk of stone at Tintagel Castle, which is located on the coast of Cornwall. According to experts, the bizarre mixture of ancient language and symbolism could be from someone practicing how to write. Just like how you might practice a new language today in a notebook, somebody was practicing new languages on a piece of stone 1,400 years ago. The discovery was made recently by researchers with the Cornwall Archaeological Unit. Michelle Brown, an expert in ancient writing from the University of London, says the inscription is an important piece of ancient English tradition. The Latin shows just how powerful Roman influence was even after Rome had collapsed. And the Christian symbols show the advancement of Christianity across the British Isles. But perhaps the most exciting part of all is that the castle may have once been the very place where King Arthur lived. Any King Arthur fans out there? Let me know! The ruins of Tintagel have always been fascinating because of their dramatic location, perched on jagged cliffs facing the sea. In the 12th century AD, Geoffrey of Monmouth wrote in his famous book about the history of the kings of Britain that King Arthur was conceived inside Tintagel Castle. And in 1998, another stone was discovered in this same castle with the Celtic name Artugnu inscribed on it. Many believe the inscription was a misspelled version of Arthur, which, if true, would definitively prove that the great king really did live here. However, the name Artugnu may have nothing to do with Arthur at all. The truth is that nobody really knows if he was a real king or just a myth. And now for number 9. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Rogue46. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. 
If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. Number 9. The Wachiria There was a monstrous beast living in Iowa 330 million years ago. It was an amphibious creature, an early tetrapod, and it was a ferocious predator. Scientists call it Wachiria, and they say it looked like a mix between a crocodile and a salamander. It wasn't an animal you'd want to get into a wrestling match with. This thing lived long before the dinosaurs ever came around, back when the world was ruled by swampy monsters, massive reptiles, and other strange creatures. The fossils of Wachiria have been found all throughout Iowa, and there's even a collection of its teeth at the Field Museum in Chicago. But scientists recently made some shocking, in-depth discoveries about the extinct animal. We already knew it came into being during the Carboniferous period and was a kind of evolutionary experiment. But now, a team of scientists have found out the monstrosity grew extremely quickly. After a close examination of its fossilized remains, scientists found its growth pattern to be drastically different from modern reptiles and amphibians. Megan Whitney from Loyola University says Wachiria grew very rapidly, primarily in the juvenile phase of life. It soon reached seven feet long, making it one of the biggest predators of its day. This thing had a large skull and its mouth was loaded with sharp teeth. And according to Whitney, its limbs were rather chunky and robust. It likely explored the shorelines as one of the first animals on land with a backbone, and it was also one of the first real predators that evolved on the planet. Number 8. Sophisticated Trading The small island of Cyprus, which is located in the middle of the Mediterranean, has always been an important place in human history. It was one of the earliest centers for international trade 3,500 years ago. And while this has always been somewhat known, archaeologists recently made a staggering discovery. What they found was copious amounts of copper that had been mined around 1500 BC on the island, with the disused quarries discovered near the ancient village of Hala Sultan Teke. Researchers with the University of Gothenburg in Sweden unearthed the remains of consumer items that were either mined or manufactured locally before being traded to faraway lands. They say they found imported pottery, luxury goods, gold, silver, gemstones, and ivory at the site. They also uncovered a huge supply of copper, which was used as a trading commodity. In other words, those living on the island of Cyprus traded their ample copper for luxury materials like gold and elephant tusks. The development of these copper mines transformed the previously small settlement into a flourishing trade center. The trading hub itself was also found by archaeologists. They identified 35 acres of land guarded by a thick perimeter wall. This would have been the central trading hub protected by gates and armed guards. Merchants from all over the Mediterranean would have sailed here just to fill up on copper. Then they would have transported it back to their homeland to make a serious profit. But here's one thing most people aren't talking about. Copper smelting almost certainly produced dangerous amounts of lead, arsenic, and cadmium. Even though these people were flourishing and getting rich, they were unwittingly poisoning their whole island. It could be why, 500 years after the mines were opened, they were suddenly shut down and the city began to fall into ruins. Number 7. Prehistoric Bat Skeleton Scientists have announced the discovery of the oldest bat skeletons ever found. According to National Geographic, scientists found bat skeletons from 52 million years ago. The discovery of this totally new prehistoric species could finally reveal how bats developed the uncanny ability to eco-locate. Bats have always been weird. Although people like to call them flying rodents, the truth is that bats are flying mammals that can navigate using sound waves. These creatures have superpowers humans can only dream of ever developing. But scientists have never known how they evolved such supernatural powers. Now, we have the ancient skeletons of some prehistoric bats from southwestern Wyoming to help researchers with their investigation. How convenient! Scientists have named the new species Icaronicteris gunelli. The bat weighed only about 25 grams, 
and although it's the earliest known species, it already had the ability to fly and use echolocation. The prehistoric bat likely lived in the thick forest surrounding an ancient lake. They preferred living near water because they hunted insects like mosquitoes who lived there too. This was during the Eocene Epoch, after the dinosaurs were gone and when global temperatures were extremely warm. And yet even with this discovery, scientists still aren't sure how bats originated. Where did they come from? Paleontologists from Arizona State University say the bat looked almost identical to our modern bats. There are currently 1,400 bat species on the planet, making them one of the most successful animals ever to evolve. But when did they first come into existence? We now know that bats were around at least 52 million years ago, and that they rapidly spread across the planet. However, we have no origin species nor any half-species that were in the middle of developing their great abilities. Bats just kind of showed up, making them a huge evolutionary mystery. Number 6. A Great Conspiracy? According to a wildly controversial study by Russian researchers, human beings have never left the Earth's atmosphere. The Russian researchers say most of their information comes from scientific observations that were stored in archives over 20 years ago. The study suggests that Earth's atmosphere is significantly larger than scientists ever realized. We're not trying to say that human beings never landed on the moon. It's not that kind of discovery. Humans have definitely been to space, and Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. But that doesn't mean the brave space travelers physically left our atmosphere. Scientists are now saying the atmosphere is so humongous that it extends beyond the moon. Russian researchers used data compiled by the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, or SOHO for short. The instruments at the observatory measured the borders of the planet's atmosphere to be spread out over 391,000 miles, which is nearly twice the distance between the surface of Earth and the surface of the Moon. This would mean that every astronaut in human history went into space without technically leaving the atmosphere. It doesn't sound like a big deal, but it changes a lot of things we thought we knew about space. Why is nobody else talking about this shocking discovery? It's because the measurements were taken between 1996 and 1998 by a group of scientists with the Space Research Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The lead researcher of the study, Igor Balyukin, claimed the moon passes through our atmosphere. But these deductions were stored away and were largely ignored by the international community. And it was only recently that experts rediscovered the results of this study. Do you think Earth's atmosphere extends beyond the moon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. Number 5. The Gospel of Matthew A version of the Gospel of Matthew was just revealed thanks to a curious researcher and a powerful UV light. A historian perusing ancient texts at the Vatican was responsible for locating the hidden fragment from the Gospel of Matthew. It was written in Old Syriac language, not something you're going to find being taught in most schools today. The historian found the hidden version of the Gospel by using ultraviolet photography. The thing about the Middle Ages was that scribes had a difficult time coming across parchment paper. Just like how Picasso and other famous artists reused their canvases, so too did European scribes reuse parchments. Somebody wrote this particular version of the Gospel of Matthew, then erased it and reused the parchment to write a new version. The most recent version was written in Georgian, and even has an older text written in Greek hidden underneath it. But when scholar Grigory Kessel used a UV light, he found an even deeper layer hidden beneath the Greek which contains a passage from the Gospel, Matthew 12, 1. Kessel believes someone copied this verse onto the parchment between the 3rd and 6th centuries AD. The Gospel has always been attributed to Matthew, supposedly written by Jesus' very own apostle. But now, historians aren't so sure about that. This particular text seems to support the theory that the Gospel of Matthew was written by multiple authors before being modernized and placed in the New Testament. The passage on the old piece of parchment reads, The disciples began to pick the heads of grain and rub them in their hands and eat them. But in the New Testament, the same passage reads, 
Jesus began to pick the heads of grain and rub them in his hands and eat them. It's a completely different statement and a great example of how the Bible's passages have been altered over the years. Number 4. The Formation of the Andes The Andes is one of the longest mountain ranges in the world, stretching an unimaginable 5,530 miles along the western edge of South America. The mountains are up to 430 miles wide in some places and stretch nearly four and a half miles into the clouds. Scientists have always wondered how the colossal mountain range rose to such great heights and how it grew to be so long. But now, scientists think they've figured it out. A group of researchers from the University of Copenhagen have presented a new hypothesis for the formation of the Andes. They studied the tectonic plate upon which the mountain range rests and found that something unusual happened 15 million years ago. As a quick reminder, tectonic plates cover the entirety of our planet's surface, pressed up against each other like misshapen jigsaw pieces. Every year, these plates shift a minuscule amount. They move so little that it's almost insignificant. The giant plates move at about the same speed as your fingernails grow. But every once in a while, without any warning, the plates speed up or slow way down. And it's during these times of abnormal movement that mountains are often formed. In the case of the Great Andes Mountains, there were two periods of abnormal movement. Scientists say that first, the Nazca Plate crashed into the mountains and caused them to grow taller. There would have been a mountain range here already, but the collision of the plates compacted the mountains like smushing some clay between your hands, forcing the terrain upwards. Then there was a dramatic slowing of the South American plate, like pulling the clay slowly apart, which caused the mountains to be stretched and grow wider. This new information may not seem like a revelation, but for scientists it really is. Researchers were able to accurately estimate tectonic plate velocity over a span of millions of years. This method could be used to calculate the motion of plates in the future and to get a truly comprehensive understanding of how our planet changes over time. Number 3. The Volcanoes on Venus Just a few months ago, scientists weren't entirely sure if Venus was home to any active volcanoes. Now we know there could be upwards of 85,000 of them covering the surface of one of the most hostile planets in our solar system. This has been one of the biggest discoveries in the Milky Way in recent years. Experts once believed Venus was a geologically dead planet, like a zombie planet totally incapable of the gentlest of volcanic eruptions. Now scientists are fairly certain that Venus is its very own version of hell with an atmosphere of fire and brimstone. But how can scientists flip-flop around like this? It's not that we didn't know Venus was covered in volcanoes. It's just that determining the potential for active volcanoes on a foreign planet isn't exactly easy. Scientists already identified thousands of volcanoes and coronas, but they didn't see any activity. Additionally, scientists believe Venus no longer had tectonic plates making the likelihood of volcanic eruptions very unlikely. Without tectonic plates, there isn't enough movement to produce a fiery eruption. But now we know better. On March 15, 2023, researchers published a new interpretation of data collected by the Magellan mission from 1989 to 1994, when NASA sent a probe to orbit the planet. When looking at the data with fresh eyes, scientists spotted traces of an eruption that occurred in 1991. The team then used a computer program to compile data and look for more signs of volcanoes. When they were finished, they had a list of 85,000 potential volcanoes that are currently active on Venus. None of these are confirmed, but they are all potential candidates. To put that into perspective, our planet only has 1,350 potentially active volcanoes. Can you imagine 85,000? Number 2. Ancient Sandals Archaeologists recently stumbled upon something amazing in Istanbul. It's caught not only the attention of historians around the globe, but also fashionistas. Researchers found a pair of ladies' sandals from 1,500 years ago. They date back to the days of the Byzantine Empire, just after the fall of Rome. 
These sandals are even adorned with a heartwarming message. In ancient Greek, the words on the bottoms of the sandals translates to Use in health, lady, wear in beauty and happiness. It's pretty wild to realize that even in ancient times, shoe designers were busy coming up with slogans to help sell footwear. But these sandals were only part of a much larger discovery. Archaeologists excavating the ancient harbor of Eleutherius have found an estimated 60,000 artifacts since they started digging in 2004. But these newly discovered sandals really take the cake. They are extremely unique and quickly became the hottest attraction at the local museum. Scholars think the sandals belonged to a Greek woman living in Constantinople. The issue with the ancient Romans and the Byzantines is that they aren't always represented accurately in modern media. The truth is that the Byzantines, who were a fragment of the Roman Empire that survived, loved color and patterns. And the Romans did too. People weren't just walking around in boring gray or beige togas. People loved rich patterns, silk cloth, embroidery, and fancy footwear, just like they do today. But none of this stuff lasts very long and typically decays, so it's hard to find surviving artifacts. These sandals are an excellent example of just how sophisticated ancient fashion really was. Number 1. Mysterious Shipwreck the scattered remains of a shipwreck from the 1800s were just found on Bald Head Island in North Carolina. Pieces of wood, rusted metal fasteners, and extremely old nails were discovered washed up on the pristine beaches of the island. Archaeologists quickly came to investigate, and their preliminary investigations revealed the mysterious artifacts had to be at least 200 years old. The biggest and most impressive piece was the hull of the ship a wooden skeleton that measured about 60 feet long. Maritime history expert Kevin P. Duffus said the ship is bigger than what you'd expect from a standard fishing boat. In all likelihood, it wasn't a fishing vessel at all, but a schooner. And judging by the location where its wooden bones were found, it likely sank in the frying pan shoals. These names are great. Bald Head Island, Frying Pan Shoals. But there is no current identification for the boat. This particular stretch of coastline is known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. There have been over 2,000 shipwrecks found between Cape Hatteras and Cape Fear, and many of them have never been identified. Thanks for watching! Which of these amazing recent discoveries did you find the most interesting? What would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you later! Bye!